Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! I'd normally start with a cheery intro, but like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you do for this one. It's the warm up episode 142. It's your host, Brady Frost, and with Tom Bradshaw this evening. We're recording straight after the dismal, depressing uh, defeat 4 1. Tom, how are you doing? Oh, I'm not bad, Brady. I don't know if this is a good idea recording after it or not, but I think I'm that confused of how we've lost that game 4 1. I don't really know what to say. Like, I've, okay. I honestly do not know what to say because I just don't understand how that team has scored. Well, I just don't know how our team has thrown that game away and ended up losing it 4-1 to that Preston team who, I'm not saying that Preston team weren't any good, but they, it, they didn't look like... <laughs> didn't look bothered at points they didn't look like they wanted to kind of, they weren't knocking at the door 24 7 it's just a, such a it's embarrassing the players on that pitch should be absolutely embarrassed with that performance Brady. it's it's amateur it's like under six it was like a team of under 16s were playing there's no leaders on that pitch there's no one there making the right decisions at the right time you're coming out after half time, one nil up. Keep the ball for a bit. Don't do anything stupid. Wiles gives it away. Matos does the weirdest thing on the end of his edge of his box. I don't know what he's doing. Just get it out. Don't what you I don't get what he's doing there. Just clear it. And then he gives away the penalty, which mm, it looked very soft, but it's still led from town doing absolutely stupid things. And I've there was already example. The only the only kind of pressure Preston put on us in the first half was from Town doing stupid things with the ball, giving it away in dangerous areas, not not playing as a team. Basically, that's what that's that's really what I got from tonight. I mean, we we had an all right first half. Where I think we were good for the one nil win, and it just absolutely capitulated. And there's obviously just no one on that pitch who keeps the team together when when things are maybe but they weren't even getting tough and that's the really worrying thing the way Preston didn't even have to do anything he's absolutely just rolled over and let him thrash us for one I'm the dumbest tickled uh, yeah I mean you were texting during the game and uh, you were saying we're looking alright and then yeah <laughs> um, I mean the lads will cover it like break it down in more detail on on the, the main pod the weekend but yeah just um i don't know tom I, you know not to be mr negative i did say i think um i think in the millwall preview I'm, I'm a bit worried about town they did get that win it looked like a crucial win against millwall as well and the manner of the win but yeah just to follow it up with this and be ahead like you said to be one nil up um and capitulate as they've done that i think that's the only way you can describe it i mean i'm just looking at you know, like you say, sometimes the stats that help with a game like that. But I mean, like, yeah, yeah, just Preston better and everything. More shots on target. You know, we only had two shots on target. Um, yeah, we created more XG, more big chances than us. Um, Nichols made free saves. I just, um, but Brady, I, I, wonder know, how, how much of of I wonder how much of those chances came in the last twenty minutes of that game. I mean, yeah, probably. That's because it felt I, like a lot. I mean, if this, if someone gets a hat trick in the last ten minutes, yeah, then, uh, I, but I, I don't yeah. really remember. They had a spell of like five corners in a row in the first half, which came from Town messing around with it, and then other than that, nothing really. That first half, then second half, they get the penalty, and I won't even say straight after the penalty they were up for, up for it, going for the kind of second, and then it's just as soon as that second went in, it was just. All over the place, and it's really disappointing given how important that game against Millwall was. And uh, yeah, it wasn't the prettiest game of football. Um, both teams look pretty rubbish, but I'd say both teams are your bot should be in the bottom three. The what 
what we saw um but we we mm. got the win we got the three points and you were i was kind of hoping that that three points gave this team a bit of belief and i, I thought it had done especially the way we we're playing in that first half and just yeah like i think if if a performance if if there's a performance to to just really nail home this kind of yeah this team is going down that's it for me this season well, I was going to ask you, because, I mean, just looking at the results, Millwall beat Leicester, uh, Plymouth and QPR drew. Um, Norwich came back... Sorry, uh, Sheffield Wednesday came back against Norwich to draw 2 all. Um Results haven't really gone for us either tonight. And I know on the last preview, you said you think they will stay up. I mean, you know, you've had a win and a defeat since, but um, how are you feeling about it? I know I'm asking you about 10 minutes after a 4-1 defeat, but... Um, yeah, how you how you feel about town's chances? I I, I said did I, I said they would stay up, being optimistic. But I also said they could stay up if they wanted to. And I think yeah, I thought oh blooming it, Mill the with the Millwall win. I thought maybe they've they have kind of maybe believing in themselves a bit more. And and then you see that first half against Preston, and you think right, this is good. This is what you were hoping a win would do for us. But then it's all it just all fell back into place of, of why we're down there. And obviously there's no belief in that team, but mm-hmm. there's also just some real immature players on that pitch who who just yeah, then I wouldn't have said that. Are they not good enough for championship football? Maybe not, but it's just the decision making is killer and yeah, I think because of the way the results have gone tonight, it's not good. I mean, we'd be very lucky if we're not in the bottom three coming into the Bristol City game. Um, I'd be very surprised if Birmingham don't get... They've got Cardiff, haven't they? So they've got... I'd say that's a reasonably good game for them. Uh, even a point takes them above us, doesn't it? I mean, the, the, the another disappointing thing about tonight is this goal difference taking another absolute whacking for no reason yeah yeah i mean tom you were very um kind of coming out on the on the defense for uh, andre brighton right do you put anything down to him here or is it just like you say you, you know you think not, you not really brady i mean he's made subs tonight but he's made positive subs and it I think it was one or when he like brought Healy and Ward on. I can't particularly remember. It's just really annoyed me those last three goals. So, like, I feel like the subs he was making were positive. He was trying to win the game. I don't think it really affected the tactics much. I don't think it gave Preston an edge. And I really think, and when you look at what we've had, Warnock got a few points with this squad. Darren Moore didn't get enough points for this squad. Now Andre struggling to get points for this squad. It just comes down to the players. And there's people who say that this squad is underperforming and they should be doing better than they are. But I think that's absolute yeah, rubbish. I think these players aren't good enough. I think there's a there's a small minority of players um that you could say are championship footballers and the rest are just they might be technically good, but I think mentally and the kind of just f- their footballing knowledge, their decision makings during a game are just absolute amateur. God, Tom, so what you really feel? I mean, I just uh, I, now I'm really it's just I that game. Oof, I just what I just cannot believe what has just happened at the end of that game, really. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just laughing about it. Otherwise, I'll get I'll get very annoyed, and uh, that's when you tweet something you regret. I think Matt said something like spineless, and I think that's it. Like you know, yeah, spot on. being level with ten minutes to go. It's just yeah. Um, anyway, Tom, um, should we talk about the game on Saturday? Because yeah, town are going to bounce into- back. They're going to bounce back against Bristol City. They're going to travel to Ashton Gate this Saturday. Lovely little part of the world is Bristol. Um, they're Bristol. They're playing Blackburn uh, tonight. As this episode yeah. will go out, obviously we're recording straight after Preston, but this will go out in your feeds on Wednesday morning. Uh, prior to that result, the Robins have won three in their last six league games. 
and the home record is all right. Uh, five wins in ten, but they have lost one nil to Cardiff and QPR in the last four. Tom, I, I suppose these are, you know, we keep talking about each game, cup finals, blah, blah, blah. I suppose they've lost this cup final uh, against Preston. Um, how do you feel about them heading into this cup final against Bristol? Mm, this cup final against Bristol City, who uh, we have an all right history down there, I think. Uh, I think they're just edging it. But, um, I mean, like head-to-head wise, uh, I've, uh, historically, I feel like, especially recently, we have struggled down that way. But you never know, do you? I mean, I, the the worrying thing is, I've, I'd say I'd put Bristol City currently on a similar level to that Preston team we played on Tuesday night, and they've scored three goals against us in ten minutes. Um, and away from home, it seems like uh, if we concede, it just falls to absolute shit. So. Um, I'd say we need to score the first goal, but then you look at our results. Uh, what is it? 25 points thrown away this season from winning positions. Which, when you look at the when you look at the table again, that is an absolute kicker. That it really is. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Um, I mean. They struggle to get they struggle to get a point against a pretty poor Sunderland team. Who, I mean, they've had an all right performance against Leeds tonight, some London, I believe. But mm. recently, they've not they've not done too well. So you maybe take a bit of a positive on that front for a town. I think I think um, obviously Manning has gone in there and he's started to build a build a team and started to get them to play the way he wants to. And they've since we last played them, they've picked up a, sort of a good number of points. They're now safe in mid table. They're probably looking at next season ready to push for hopefully playoffs from their point of view um but they're they're another team that on paper i think town this town squad could get a result against um for at least 60 minutes 70 minutes of the game <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's manning what is he? he's quite possession based manager um, they pass mm. a lot of short passes, keep the ball a lot. Um, I mean, I think this one, if we'd have got a point against Preston, I'd say get a point at Bristol and I'd, I'd be very happy with that. But I think this one now becomes a must win given the last game of the season is against Ipswich and I cannot see us doing anything there. Um, no. So, yeah, this now becomes a must win for me and with the other results so you could i think i think the only way t- this town team are, <laughs> are probably um getting points is keeping it nil nil till the 90th minute and then try and nick in a winner in the last in added time because it seems that we can't hold on to stuff particularly well um we can't score just before we can't go one nil up into half time and come out because we seem to mess that up in, within the first five minutes um so yeah i mean if it's nil nil with with five minutes to go brady um i'm saying we've done all right and hoping we get three points <laughs> Poor Tom. uh um well yeah i mean preston was still having outside chance for the playoffs i suppose whereas Pr- bristol I think they'd have to win five in a row, you know, four in a row or whatever, which I just don't see happening. So maybe there, you know, um, it's interesting because remember we had Dave on, I think it was the Bristol City preview last time, and uh, he was saying he just can't work out if Liam Manning's a good coach or not because there's mm. question marks around everything. And I suppose with that, you know, town, it depends whether it, I, I think again, it depends what. Bristol City turn up because if they're not that bothered um, then obviously that's a lot better for town but if they want to put on a good show then you you know it's hard to look yeah. at the positives when you've just lost 4-1 away from home but um, when we looked at this like run of last six 
I did think this was one we could get something from just because they're, you know, Preston were still kind of in and around it, whereas Bristol, yeah, I don't think they have loads to play for. So um, I can go one or two ways, but I do I do think, again, I just can't see, I just can't see Town getting another away win between now and yeah. the end of the season. But I just don't think that's happening. Um, but I could see him get a point here. And I think a point wouldn't be the worst thing. Um Again, it depends on the manner because I like, like you said with the Stoke game, I thought we were actually all right against Stoke. It's just that, like, one one mistake. So it's a bit of, it's a, bit of a tricky one, really. Um, I mean, we'll come on to Kwana's question because this kind of sums up the theme of what this is us jaded men talking about um, podcasts. But yeah, Kwana's question the, the, the answers aren't particularly great, as you can imagine. Okay, we said if you had to pick one player who you think will be important to town's final run in, who is it and why? Um, Jerry Hinnon, he said, well, on one hand, town desperately need clean sheets. So maybe it's town's bedrock central defender. I'll, I'll bear in mind he tweeted this before. <laughs> <laughs> Preston. Then again, you can't claim more three points without goals. So maybe it's the most most important the top goal scorer for the season keeps firing. Um, so yeah, how it really? Um, I just uh, and then we had another one which was uh, Tom Edwards because uh, who is it from? I'll read it exactly. I should say prepping. Dave said Tom Edwards is clearly a favourite in the squad because every single one of them has gone out their way to make him look like prime Messi tonight. So uh, yeah, not. Not the positive vibes we need, Tom, but um, Tom, who would you say is uh, Towns? Do you think will be Towns' most important player? If you had to put yeah, hat on it, if you had to, you know, had to give me a name, gun to your head, metaphorical gun, listener. Although Tom, I wouldn't give Tom a gun after a 4 1 defeat. Someone who could keep us up if they start performing is Ben Wiles, and he's for me, he's been very disappointing. He hasn't kind of created enough. Full stop. It's not like he's not even creating chances that we're missing. His passing tonight against Preston was absolutely atrocious. Didn't get to the right man. But in those instas, instances where he's picking up in the final third and that pass is good, then you you score him maybe one or two more in a game. There's one as well tonight where Sauber's played him through and maybe the pass is a little bit over hit, but Wiles is just so slow off the mark and he's he's if he's just a bit ahead of the ahead of the player, ahead of the ball, he's one on one with a Preston keeper and Town go one nil up in the first twenty minutes and for me I think if he if if he somehow pulls out of the bag for absolutely amazing performances Till the end of the season, then he could be the he could be the game changer. But the way things are, I just can't see it. I mean, it'd be really nice if Solber Thomas kept performing the way he does, but just again cut out some absolutely amateur decision making that then leads to us. It's like that. <laughs> that's all it needs to be, Brady. Just cut that out. Um, I mean, Helic. I, I, Helic has been. Yeah, probably our best defender, but I think I do think he could do more on the pitch. I don't really ever see any leadership from him. He's a very mm. quiet. He's a very quiet defender, isn't he? And then uh, Matty Pearson is a loud defender, but you know he's like he's not loud in the leadership way. I never really see the hel- the leadership from Helic, and I, that's some that's not going to happen in four games, but. Oh, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind someone to kind of stand up at the back, and I think we lack that at the back. Really, we've not really got. I don't look at that back line and ever th- and ever think, oh, he's running, he's running that defense today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. Um, I was struggling with this one. I think if if I had to. Say someone, I, I, I think probably Reese Healy. I just think that Millwall game, we just town have, have been haven't really had a striker like that for so long. I know we only got um, about twenty or minutes tonight, but I just think we're look, we're clearly not playing well at the moment. Even that victory over Millwall, it was much needed, but it wasn't a good game. Um, 
I just think Ta- like he just might be the striker who gets those one nil wins when Town aren't playing well. Um, and I'm not so sure it will be for this Bristol game, but um, I'd love it if it was the case. But I just think, yeah, you know, goals win your games, and I just I just think if Town can somehow be solid, and we do, you know, obviously tonight kind of t- takes it all away, but you know, Stoke we looked a lot more solid I thought and yeah it's it's a really good goal that they score but yeah and, and Millwall was a bit of a stodgy game they didn't really look like fret, fret in us mm. but that's one thing Birmingham game coming up I, I could you know I could see him getting the the first in a one you know yeah. getting a, the goal in a one else win so I'll probably go for him but it, it's it is hard because I agree with you I'll, I think Ben Wiles it just feels like he didn't really have a pre-season. He's always been catching up. He's been in and out of the side. I think probably next season you'd expect more from him and you can have a full pre-season. Again, Melorovic, he's looked good in spells, but I think he probably needs another pre-season. It's hard to kind of move over. Depends what sort side's looking at. I mean, Sorba, you know, I do really like Sorba. Is he a match winner? Like, he can provide the options, but I'm not sure he's someone who wins you the games. Um you know, maybe maybe Nichols, because again, Nichols has kind of made during this run that he still made some good saves and kept the scores a bit more respectable. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably go Healy, but <laughs> yeah, Solber's yeah. an interesting one, Brady, because I, I think so. I think Solber is playing at his best he can play at this level, and he's so close to being a very, very good Championship footballer. And I can see kind of why the rumours are that some Premier League teams have kind of looking at him because there's points in games where he looks so good. He does things, takes on about three players, but it's always, it is always that that decision and his decision is just off. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's something that you can really, that you can train into a player or change. So, mm. yeah, Um uh, but I, I think he's been. I do. I'd say he's been our best player this year, Sarber Thomas. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think he's probably the player of the season. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, other options you've got. You know, Bergsorg can frustrate and excite in equal measure. You know, he has that bit of a difference maker, and got a goal tonight. But Karama, you know, Karama goes. He's a bit of a streaky player, isn't he? Maybe yeah. getting one just kind of giving well, him the confidence. It. Hopefully, you're right. He does. Hopefully he gets three or four for the rest of the season. But yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's tricky. I'll tell you what, we'll go to a break. Um yeah, obviously if you are going uh down to Bristol, um don't forget you can get your orders in at Magic Rock uh Bruin, who sponsor this podcast. You can get ten percent off any orders that you do online by using the code AHTTC ten. Uh you must know it by now if you listen to this, so it's at the bottom. Of the ticker, if bottom of the ticker, bottom of the screen with a ticker, if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, so yeah, get it ordered and uh, you can thank us later. Tom and I are going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about the poll that we did on Twitter. Okay, Tom, uh, I won't keep you too long because uh, I can, you know, as the kids say, the vibes are off on this one, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, did a, we did a poll. It was um, Town got a much needed win at the weekend ahead of the pressing game tonight. How many more wins do you see the Terriers getting in the last five? Um, so again, we ran this before the pressing game. Uh, I'd love to see it afterwards, but four um, percent said none. Uh, I bet that'd be high after that one. Nineteen uh, percent said one win. Sixty-eight uh, percent said two wins, and nine uh, percent said three wins or more. So, an interesting one. I mean, so we've got uh, Paul Hitchinson says, I think we need to win these next two because uh, we don't need or want to be going into the last game needing to win. We kind of touched on that. Uh, we need to win at these. A draw at Preston would be okay. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. They are a bogey team, to be fair. Uh, Nagel Ball, not the real Kev, says both home games. Uh, and, yeah. Um, Tom, how many wins do you see Town getting in these last couple of matches? These last four games, Brady, I don't know. I think I, I think when I've been doing my little tallying up, seeing what we think, I don't think I had Preston down as a win. I think I I thought, oh, we might be able to nick a draw. Um, 
I think that's what really has disappointed me more than anything today. I think if I if I hadn't watched the game and I I didn't hear anything about it and I just saw that we'd lost four one, I probably wouldn't be that bothered. Do you know what I mean? But because because I've seen kind of how comfortable town were for up until the second goal, really, that's what's just absolutely rattled me tonight. So I'm just like. Um, that's what worries me about about the rest of them. How I, th- I think town I think town need to win two to have any mm. chance of staying up. I think it's going to be fifty points the way things are going. Fifty points plus potentially for that twenty first space. Um, I think town out of the four will win. <sighs> I'd like to say too, because I like to think we beat Swansea in Birmingham and they'd be massive because they're both in and around there. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I, th- I, think, I think one win and a draw and then lose two. I think we lose to Bristol, we draw to Birmingham, we beat Swansea and we lose to Ipswich. And do you think that's enough for him to oh, stay Oh, no, up? no. That's going down, that is. That's going down. That's going down below Chef Wednesday. God, this is cheery. Um, <laughs> remind us to never do this straight after. Um, uh, look, oh, like you, town. You're, you're, you're going to say four wins. You think four wins, don't you? I think four wins. I, I Look, knowing town, they'll probably lose to Birmingham but beat Ipswich on the last day or something. I mean, it's, the pressure's getting to Ipswich, you could argue. Um, no one in the top three seems to want to win it. I think town looked dreadful away from home. Um, if I'm being honest, so I, I think it comes down to those that Birmingham game and that Swansea game. I think I feel more confident about the Swansea game because there's not as much riding on it for Swansea. Uh, and again, uh, that's kind of looking at the games, that's how I think. It's bad, isn't it? But I'm basically just thinking on how the other team, because I think if the other team wants it, like Millwall, mm. they, they were weak. I thought they were very strange how they approached that game. Um, yeah. you, want, you want Swansea to beat Stoke on Wednesday night. So you, I think Swansea win before they play us. If Swansea wins either of those games before they play us, then they're, they're safe. Um, yeah. I think they just need probably one more win, 50 points, and they're probably all right. So you, you I, kind of probably yeah. want them to get that win that then takes a bit of, you know what I mean, a uh, bit of wind out. I don't know. Or do you want the pressure on? I don't know what's better, Brady. I don't, I don't know, know if it's, is it better if Town are, in, it's like, is it better if Town are in the bottom three? Does that make them feel better? It's it's a, it's mentally, because I, I think this is the one problem with this team is they are such a emotional and mentally driven team, obviously. They hmm. was probably sat there at half time thinking, Fucking hell, we're on forty six points, we're in nineteenth. And then I don't know, maybe that just gets in their head and they'll be like, Whoa, fuck hell, what are we doing? We're, we're gonna be all right. Yeah, you know I, I, they just obviously look so mentally kind of emotionally deprived or not deprived, driven. Do you know what I mean? It, it and you can't you can't be like that if you're kind of fighting relegations. But I wonder if when they're in the bottom three, the kind of pressure's off a bit more. And um, maybe that's what we saw against Millwall potentially. But yeah, um, it's a t- it's a very tough one, Brady. Isn't it? I, f- I think I think we've said we said the three home wins, didn't we? Would maybe just have be good enough. So I think yeah. I think I I can see him winning another game, um, and I think it's probably that Swansea. And then, to be honest, it just yeah. I, uh, if you, if you if you had to push me, I think they could get two wins, but it would only be, and that would be them performing very well, and it would only be Swansea Birmingham. Um, I just don't I just don't see when they came away from home. Um, like you said, that performance is. Tonight is very concerning. <laughs> you know, there's no that is a collapse. There's no there's no uh, point in sugarcoating it. So, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's um, oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep the good vibes going, but yeah, it's it, it's difficult. I, think, I suppose you've got to call a spade a spade, aren't you? It's disappointing. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I said for the Millwall preview, I, I just, I don't see them staying up. I don't, and I think even with the Millwall game, like I was just hoping the manner of how we what we won um, would really lift us, and it's just obviously, obviously did not done that. that. Did. It did for forty five minutes. It did we were all over Preston, better team in that first half, and then even going into the second half, it was Preston didn't come out and get in us in us faces. We just made an absolute ridiculous decision and mistake, and then it's just gone. It's and I. And now is it we're back to square one again? But can they can they somehow? I don't know. Somehow get get a result away at Bristol City, and get that morale back up again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I suppose I suppose that's the way they've got to approach it. Because I do agree with you. I think um, to me that collapse is tonight it just feels like a team that's always been around relegation it just kind of feels like old ghosts coming back to haunt them yeah um but you kind of got to write it off aren't you you know if you're andre brighton right you've kind of got to be like this is you know obviously have a go at them <laughs> but then be yeah. like look that's like this game's done we can't change it we need to focus on the game on saturday um and yeah like like you say the, the thing is they just got to write it off yeah the the, the advantage they've got compared to the teams around them is they've got experience of being in the situation and they've got out of it before yeah so you know if we're going to look for positives i think that's a huge one like they have done this before um you know you look at wednesday yes they rallied back but yeah birmingham again like you say depends on what their result is um but i don't know you know the, they could they could shock us you know it's very be very town for them actually to win their two away games and lose their both both their home games. You know, like this team, you think you know what they're going to do and you can predict what they're going to do, and then they never, they always disappoint or surprise you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. If I, I think they'll get another win, if you have to, if you, you know, I'd love them to get two, and I think actually that probably could be enough. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Um, Speaking of which, Tom, I think we're just kind of a bit mopey and rambling. So um, why don't we talk about our match predictions for this one? Um, what are you going for? Um, if if you'd have asked me at half-time against Preston, I'd say a one-all draw and a nice away point. Um, <laughs> let's say Town are winning 1-0 and lose 3-1. Um, I, I just I just don't have any belief in this team anymore, Brady, unfortunately. Um, I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to come up with thinking, but I think it's the hope that kills you, the classic, isn't it? And you think, oh, new day, dust it off, they'll be fine, they'll go down there, get a, one, a much-needed 1-0 win. But I just can't see it when there's kind of players in that team... What Matty James been playing a lot of games for them this year, doing really well. Uh, Jason Knight, one of the lads that mm. they brought him, brought him from Derby. Yeah, one of those Derby youth players who Derby had to sell. Um, kind of showing how good that Derby academy has been. Again, um, Rob Dickey, good defender, and then O'Leary and Net played a lot of games for him, keeping him a couple of clean sheets, especially recently, keeping the scores down and things like that. So. I just look at that team and I, oof, the kind of consistent the consistency they've had under Manning, a few of the players, um, and not too many injuries, really. Um, I just think it could be a very easy day out for them uh, if they're on, on, on good form. But you never know. I mean, you look at the results all over the Championship and you never know. So let's go for a positive 1-0 win for town. I like it. You you don't believe it, but you're saying it. Look like it's silly season, isn't it? So anything could happen. Um, I, I can see Town getting a draw here. I, I can. Um, I just can't see him winning the game. But I, I could I could see him. You know, we've got the most draws in the league. So you know, if we're if we're good at one thing, it's it's drawing a game. 
Bailey. Um, Bri- Bailey. Bri- Brady. Brady. Just because I was going to say about Darren Moore. I was in two minds about to say this. <laughs> you're, going on a, you're going on about the draws, right? Since we've had Andre. Um, oh, duh. What are you going to say? <laughs> well, how many, how many points have we actually picked up? Have we picked up? Because he it's had two Andre. wins and two draws, is it? Two wins. Uh, yeah, two draws. <laughs> and, what, and in how many games is that? Is that in nine games or ten games? Um, you know what I'm going to say? If Darren no. Moore... <laughs> Darren Moore's if, not drawing if nine Darren, games. If Darren drawing. Moore had drawn nine games, we'd be better off. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> don't, don't, you don't believe it. Look, like, come on. I don't believe it, but... We'd, yeah. we'd be, we uh, look. We, Maybe that was his plan all along, Brady. <laughs> just a long game, just draw the hell out of it. We'd be on well, forty-four the thing points. Is, Tom, if they drew every game, they'd only be on forty-six points. So uh, you know, if we we'd if be we on 40, forty-six points right now, would we? If we no, 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 no. Um, oh, if you draw, if, we, if Town drew all forty-six, I'd love to see if uh, that was just their tactic. So, like, you know, they're one and up with two minutes to go and they just kick it in their own net. Yeah. Um, I can't <laughs> believe you said that, Darren Moore shout. We're never recording a pod at half ten at night. You, you, you just need, you silly boy. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go for a draw. I just don't see, like I say, I don't see town winning away from home. Um, I've got a feeling this will be a bit of a stinker and a nil-nil rather than actually a score draw. Although, you know, we do like a, a one all, don't we? But yeah, I'm gonna go nil nil. I just think. Um I think if it, I think if Bristol beat Blackburn tonight, that does us a huge favour as well. Uh, yeah. and I think they'll probably not be bothered on Saturday. Mm. Um, yeah. I so. agree. Um I think, I, they they've got a win for me, Brady though. I don't I I, I just don't think a draw's any good. I think because I just think it's going to be so it's it's going to be 49 points 49 50 points I think it could be so if you want to be well, certain they get, they get a draw and win the two home games that's 49 yeah well it's 50 isn't it sorry Maths. yeah oh anyway. yeah we're on 43 oh no yeah yeah. Mm. yeah oh yeah so then that's what you need to so draw on two wins yeah draw on yeah. two wins during the last four yeah. From a team that's won nine all season, I know that's that's the that's the big one. That's but they've the drawn sixteen all season, and that's the positive you got to go there. There should be a draw in there. Yeah, should be. There'll be a draw in there. Yeah. If I know one thing about Huddersfield Town, they'll get a draw in, in these four games. Should bring um, Darren Moore in for the last four games. <laughs> <laughs> sure, especially. <laughs> yeah. um, Oh dear! All right. Well, at least we've ended it on some laughs, listeners. I I imagine this is probably not what you wanted to hear, but let's be honest. Like, why are we doing this? I don't know why we went ahead with this after seeing that result. But look, it's another game. Anything could happen. Um, and the boys on Sunday night slash Monday morning when it comes out, they'll take a look at what's happened unfolded at Ashton Gate. So, um. Thanks for putting up with me, Tom. Thanks to Magic Europe for sponsoring what I'm sure will go down as an all-timer if they, when they listen to this. Um, thanks to you, the listener, for sticking out uh, to this long. And Tom and I will be back to preview the next game, which is Swansea City. It's a big one. Um, so, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, chin up, as Mark Fotheran would say, did that. Uh, don't get too high when you win. Don't get too low when you lose. We'll be back to preview the next one to toughen out and up the town.